Vienna was the only city in Europe where the social life was completely mixed with court life. It was something really special, which happened only there at this time. Fashion was very much mixed up with court, ritual, protocol, and it's still the dream we have about Vienna today. It was an era of representation. It was an era where people dressed up. It's in order to impress. It's in order to perform. It's in order to adorn the role that you have been given. Making people believe that the Emperor, Emperor Franz Josef and the Habsburg family were semi-gods. When you think about the 19th century, 19th century is an era of waltzes. It's wars and court. The men wore uniforms for the balls, and the ladies were wearing crinolines and had corsets. It would be too long a piece of, of uh, cloth without adornment. The devant corsage we have in that collection is definitely a museum piece. This jewel was a wedding present for Archduchess Marie-Therese austria teschen at her wedding with Duke Philip Württemberg in 1865. It's very organic, it's very three-dimensional. It comes with the most exquisite and wonderful sized natural pearls. Most of the time they were dismantled and the stone used for other pieces of jewelry. I think it's the first time in my whole career I've, I've seen something like this. Another exceptional piece is this wonderful ruby and diamond necklace and brooch. It is stunning in the craftsmanship of this jewel because of its delicacy. You touch it and you feel that you have the flowers and blooms in your hand. Like most jewelry in the 19th century, it can be worn in different forms as a necklace or you can turn it into a tiara. And the brooch, you can wear it long or you can wear it into separate brooches. The volumes are perfect, the blooms and the stones chosen for these jewels are exceptional. This amazing pearl brooch, which was given by Alexander Duke of Württemberg to Archduchess Marie-Therese austria teschen on the occasion of her wedding to his son, Duke Philip of Württemberg, around 1865 is magnificent because of the size and quality of this natural pearl. As you can see, there's no much adornment that you need when you have a true wonder of nature. Jewelry was an essential part of the life of those ladies. They needed jewelry, they had to wear jewelry. I guess men were a bit jealous. <laughs> Men would wear jewellery around their military decoration. They wear golden things with diamonds, with sapphires, with rubies, with emeralds. And they would wear a lot of rings. Uh, we have quite a lot of rings for men in that collection. There is a vast quantity of tie pins, cufflings and cigarette boxes made out of the most fantastic and different materials. They had uh, diamond cufflings, ruby cufflings, emerald cufflings, sapphire cufflings. The tiara is an exceptional piece because it's made out of the most fantastic natural pearls of wonderful size, wonderful quality, luster and color. It was made by Köchert and another fascinating thing is that we also have the drawings for it. It was a wedding gift from Emperor Franz Josef to his niece, Archduchess Maria Immaculata, when she got married to Robert, Duke of Württemberg, around 1900. Jewelry was given for weddings, jewelry was given for birth, for birthdays. You would inherit some jewelry from your, your fathers, your mother, your grandparents. Jewelry was very, very much part of the way of life of those ladies. I find wonderful this mother of pearl and diamond fan made by Köchert in Vienna. It was a wedding present for Archduchess Maria Immaculata. It's made out of big pieces of mother of pearl and her cipher is made out of diamonds. The lace workmanship is unbelievable and it depicts both her crest and the crest of the Württembergs. 
It's extraordinary to see some pieces that probably were used but once. The importance of a jewel was not necessarily how many times you could use it, but the occasions that you could use it. In no other country in Europe, there were so many kings, queens, prince and princess, and grand dukes and archdukes. That's one of the reasons, in my opinion, the collection is so vast, because all those people were living here, and we have jewels in that collection from all those families. What's magical about this collection is not that they represent the 19th century. I think that our conception of the 19th century is when we look at objects as such, because they were what made that era.